source of fireworks. As they come off the corner, Rashad getting the jump on Norman. Here comes Waterman trying to move into second. Boy, Waterman getting into Monty Gibbs here right on the front stretch. We go three well out of turn. It's not going to work. The 31 gets loose. And there is problems in the rear of the field as the car looks like it got trapped on a barrel road. We stay under green as that car is able to backpedal to the grass, but now the yellow comes out. So it looked like somebody was the guys who were chasing Meyer in the point standings. So we are ready to resume. Let's see what Rich Sean can do on this restart. Okay, Bo Norman to the outside, Sean to the inside. Green flag waves and another nice start there by Sean. Norman gets up high. He and Ryan Waterman get into it. Now Sean goes three wide. And here is Ryan Waterman to take over the lead. Trouble for Bo Norman on the outside. He's dropping positions. Meanwhile, on the outside also is Rich John. He's going to drop a couple as well. The king of the three-wide move, Monty Gibbs, was able to go between Stone and Sean and move into second. Al Stone is third. Rich Sean is fourth. And here's Sean Monahan trying to get into the top five. Monahan with a good run side-by-side -side with Adrian Paradise in the number, th number 19 car. That's side-by-side -side for fifth. Remember, Adrian Paradise finished second last week. He's holding his own against the Delvin Hammer, Sean Monahan. Things are tightening for second and third between Gibbs and Stone. Sean did not get a good run off of turn number two, and that's going to leave Jordan Hadley getting to the inside for position number four. And we have a side-by-side -side battle deeper in the field. Myers is able to get around Brandon Fisher. Meyer goes around again. The live wire in trouble. Oh, Hammer. Head on. He went right into the crosshairs, and that car got... Nick Capacota started us off tonight with a very amazing sentimental win. Then in the Nemo Whites, it was Ben McIntyrean, Jason Palmer, winner in the late models, and we are ready to turn up the tempo, and Waterman getting the upper hand on Monty Gibbs. Monty Gibbs to the outside, Waterman... It looks like Rich Sean, he's going to get into a couple of cars. He gets airborne with the number four car. And the yellow comes out again. And it looks like liquid in the turn one area. Rich Sean is talking to Dave Barabald, and we are getting ready. As the lights are still on the pace car. So it looks like they have just about blown most of the speedy dry away that can't be blown off. And George DeCosser tells him next time around they'll be going a lot faster than they are right now. Okay, side by side. Does Monty Gibbs have anything for the 75 of Waterman? Waterman has a couple of good starts, but those two cars have gone door handle to door handle, not afraid to trade paint. Going to be a great restart right here. And it will be Ryan Waterman who will be dictating how this race will restart when he hits that yellow line in the middle of turns three and four, the start of the restart box. And here comes Ryan Waterman, and he puts some distance between himself and Monty Gibbs. Waterman has the advantage. Oh, more trouble in turn one. They go three wide, and boy, I'll tell you what, that was close. We still got a spinner there in turn number two, however. As escaping with John Porter, and Tommy Shea is stranded in the dust in turn number one and two. And we do not finish that lap. They got three wide. And getting caught in the middle of that was Adrian Paradis. He lunged backwards. Porter lunged yeah, forward. At Thompson last year without winning a race. This year, his best finish has been third. So we are ready to turn the ignition key. And Monty Gibbs, pretty good on the outside of these restarts. Let's see what he does against Ryan Water. Here we go, green flags out. Let's see if they can get this lap completed up to speed. The limited sportsman into turn number one. 
And everybody goes cautiously into the first corner. Here's Al Stone. Al Stone cranks it up and moves into second. Boy, Gibson not getting a good bite out. The turn number two opens the door for Stone. Stone takes over second spot. Good battle for a fourth spot right now with the uh, Paradise uh, going after the 31 now. And that is Monaghan on the inside of Hadley. Second through eighth could fit inside a chapstick container. Best battle for third and fourth. Gibbs on the inside, getting a little sideways. Trying to take advantage of that is Paradis. And Paradis trying to bamboozle his way into the top three. Yeah, Paradis to the inside, Gibbs to the outside. Third spot is a dead heat going into turn three. Still side by side. And Monaghan, or Hadley, is right behind him in the 37. Then we have John Porter. And that is Sean Monaghan in the upper tier of the field. Hadley is behind Porter, and it's a side-by-side -side scenario. Trouble for Cinnabella. Is that car getting very sluggish in turn two? A hard hit into turn number one wall there for Cinnabella in the 66, trying to get that car off the speedway as we try to avoid the yellow. As we go down the backstretch, your leader is the number 75, Ryan Waterman. And it is a three-way battle for third, fourth, and fifth. Here comes Paradis to the inside. A little elbow to the side of the Gibbs car. Third, fourth, and fifth can fit inside a Walnut. And now it is a 19 of Paradis taking control of the number three position. Al Stone is going after Waterman. Sean Monahan says, move over, boys. Here I come. He gets by Gibbs. Now sets his sights on Paradis. As trying to use a forearm shiver tactic, it is Monaghan. He is in fourth, and he is uh, down by a pretty sturdy margin to Adrian Paradis. The action is up at the front between Waterman and Stone. Stone has caught him, but Waterman's a hard guy to pass. Down the backstretch, Stone gives him the old warp nudge out of turn number two. It does not rattle the cage of the number 75, Ryan Waterman. And Chris Meyer has... Uh, trying to move up through the field as there is Meyer getting underneath Porter. So Meyer hasn't given up as he tries to salvage a decent finish and Al Stone working over the back bumper of the Ryan Waterman car. Stone trying to figure out how to get around that number 75 car. Waterman with the advantage. Stone in second. Paradis in third. Fourth is Sean Monahan. And behind him is Gibbs. And behind Gibbs is Meyer. Meyer on fire in the 87, halfway through the race. And the battle could be up at the front between Waterman and Stone. And another great battle is shaping up between Gibbs and Meyer. Gibbs looking good on that outside, trying to hold back the advantages of the live wire. Meyer as a 31 car, make that the 37 of Hadley got loose out of turn number two. We have seen Meyer do this several times during the season, get kicked to the back and work his way to the front, but he is finding it not that easy to get underneath Gibbs. Now he makes a power move, and it looks like Meyer might have the voltage. Trouble for Hadley once again out of turn two, that 37 car looking evil out of the turns. He drops several positions, and it looks like he may be off the pace. Getting some breathing room at the front of the field is Ryan Waterman, and Stone continues to try to track him down. Waterman clears a 55, and now Jordan Hadley is out of the race. Still so airtime is in the hangar in the middle of the infield. Jason Beal becomes the next victim of the leaders. Ryan Waterman goes around the outside, clears him, as does the 52 of Al Stone. Stone Cold trying to chase down Waterman. Now the question will be, how long will it take the 87 of Meyer to catch up to the rear bumper of the Sean Monaghan car? Monaghan in fourth. From the twilight zone to move into the top five is Chris Meyer. And having things under control right now at the front of the field is Ryan Waterman. Waterman with a two car length advantage, maybe three out of turn number four here. Seven laps to go. Once again, a lapped car is in front of the leaders, and we'll see how they clear him as they go down the back stretch. And Stone trying to stay within striking distance of the 75 car. And Meyer starting to gain ground on Sean Monaghan. So maybe Meyer can pick up another point if he can get by the 31. And he would salvage a pretty good night out of what looked like it was
was going to be a disaster. Pretty good battle between the 67 and the 14. That's Brandon Clemens. And in that number 14 car, that is Zach Robinson. Zach Robinson doing a good job in his maiden voyage here at the Speed Bowl. Nipping at the heels of Brandon Clemens. So those two cars are almost crazy glued together. Up at the front, Waterman continues to lengthen his lead against Al Stone. Yeah, hard guy to catch, Ryan Waterman, this time by four laps to go for the number 75 car. And Adrian Paris, could he make the podium for the second consecutive week? He is in a position to do that. He has a pretty substantial lead over Monaghan, and Monaghan... Is getting closer and closer to his back bumper. Two to go next time by four year leader Ryan Waterman. Waterman brings the number 75 car into turn number three as your leader with a three, four, maybe five car length lead now over Al Stone. Two to go this time, two laps to go for your leader Ryan Waterman. Al Stone slip sliding out of turn number two now, trying to catch the leader. He's running out of time with just two laps, less than two laps to go for Waterman. Slip sliding into turn number four. Waterman still with the advantage. Paradise now starting to catch the rear of the 52. So Paradise doing a good job in the 19. Monahan and Meyer, they take the white flag. Down the backstretch, a half a lap will settle this thing. This limited sportsman main event coming out of turn and number four. The checkered flag will wave for the number 75 sideways. Ryan Waterman of win for the number 75 team. Second spot goes to the 52 car. And I see the battle scars on this car. As you had a great battle going on with the 55 of Monty Gibbs, how were you able to prevail? Uh, I don't know. The way this car was handling was not good tonight. I had no drive off the corner. It was loose every time back on the gas. Um, you know, I tried running them clean and uh, just gave it the best. I wish I had something for the leaders, but just couldn't run them down. Okay, who would you like to acknowledge for your third place run tonight? Uh, I'd like to thank all my sponsors, Smedley Crane and Rigging, CSB Communications, Fiodor Auto Body Works, Newcomb Spring, and Auto Glass Specialists. And... Uh, East Coast machine and performance for the motor. So he was able to tame a rambunctious car and finish third, Adrian Paradise. And now in second, a good recovery for Al Stone the third. Al, you made your move against the 75 car midway through the race. What happened in the second half? Yeah, he just he ran a great race and uh, he outlasted us. And uh, that's kind of the name of the game here. Uh, you know, I'm just happy to be able to make the thing faster this week and not have to, you know, do everything else. Um, you know, once we get going, we put on a pretty good show. So, uh, you know, the fans deserve a good show, and hopefully they got it tonight. Okay, who would you like to give a pat on the back for providing sponsorship? Big A Auto Parts North brand for JSB Motorsports, Leary's Auto Machine uh, for the awesome horsepower that, fortunately, I can't use it all yet. Uh, Ina Shine's used cars, always ice cold, air conditioned, even though you probably don't want to use it tonight. Um, Killingworth Garage, D&D Trucking, uh, 32 Signs. Um, I'm sorry if I forget anybody, and uh, thanks fans for coming out. You know, it's, uh, we realize you got other places to be on Saturday night, and uh, thanks for being here. Al Stone finishing in second. And now for the first time this year, there is a victory party surrounding car number 75. And the winner, Ryan Waterman. And somewhere... In this crowd of Watermans is Ryan. You know, the last three races here, you were 12th, 16th, and 16th. How were you able to get things straightened out tonight? Uh, I finally brought my good car here with the little wincy crate motor in it that everybody says you can't race with. And it looked like you were very aggressive in the first couple of laps. Do you think that was the difference tonight? Oh, well, when you got guys like Al that are always on their game, you got to make your moves fast and try to get away from them, and that's what I did. Okay, who would you like to congratulate for helping you get into the winner's circle? Uh, the first person would be my dad and my brother, my girlfriend, Shauna, for letting me always be in the garage, uh, Bella Vance and Roy, it's his motor, uh, Rad Auto Machine, uh, Gates Auto Group, he helps. That's pretty much it. 
so he is back in the winner's circle in car number 75, and we'll let the winner get the final word in. And uh, check out this video on YouTube, Chuck Yourself. <laughs> I hope I didn't hear what I thought I did.